This video walks you through how to generate hyper trilinear diagrams, which are enormously useful uh, in evaluating differences in natural water samples, especially groundwater samples. So example of, the, of an actual hyper trilinear diagram is shown here on the left. And these are pretty interesting diagrams. And um, the, the spreadsheet that uh, you'll have access to, this Piper Stiff QW 2019 version 9, Chem 241, uh, it will generate these for you as you input the data. I'll show you how to do that in the video, but let's first talk about how to interpret this and what value it brings to our analyses. So uh, this is a this is the trilinear diagram here, and you can see that really what you're plotting. Uh, for a single sample is the sum of all the cations in this lower left triangle and the sum of all the anions in this lower right triangle and the axes you can see in these triangles are a function of the different species so we have magnesium here, calcium here uh, and sodium uh, plus potassium on this axis and similarly for the anions we have uh, this bicarbonate plus carbonate uh, portion in green here we have chloride on this axis and sulfide on this axis for a single sample then you'll have one point in the cations depending on its composition uh, in terms of cations and you'll have one point on anions and then what the plot does is it extrapolates a straight line up to the diamond uh, up here and then similarly it does the same for this blue line for anions and where those points intersect a new point is generated on this diamond combination plot. And so what you see if you plot a lot of different samples here are different groupings based on the specific differentiation of cation composition and anion composition. And so on the right here I have a sort of simple interpretation diagram of this of the diamond. So you can see uh, on the, the different axes you have different summations of ions but depending on where your point lands for that particular water sample you can identify these things called chemical fasces uh, and these uh, different zones within this diamond uh, kind of allow us to generally differentiate samples based on lots of different variable inputs. So it's sort of a clustering or grouping mechanism based on the unique character of these samples. And so if your point lands, for instance, up here in this vertical uh, at the top of the diagram, then we categorize these as calcium sulfate type waters. Uh, similarly, there are these three other zones. So what does this look like? So this is the interface. And then notice down here we have two tabs. We have the Piper tab. Piper being the Piper, that's the name of the diagram, the Piper trilinear diagram. And then on the left, uh, the first tab, we have the data. That's where the data input goes. So all of this interface, you're not really going to touch. This will generate it on its own. So I'll show you what the data looks like first. So I have example data from several of eight of the, the springs in Manitou Springs. And so the, what you're going to have to do to, to generate this plot is just input the, the GPS coordinates, the longitude and the latitude collected from each site, uh, depending on where your sample sites are collected. And then you have two options in terms of how you uh, name these things. So your site is, is actually the sample name. It can be an abbreviation too. Uh, and then you have the ability to group those samples. So if you're, if you're collecting lots of samples and you have different groups, say you're collecting a bunch of samples from a particular lake and then you're looking at a spring associated with that lake and then maybe some surface waters associated with that lake, maybe you group those into those specific sites even though you have several samples uh, associated. Why that becomes important is uh, whatever name you have in this group category here, that is what is going to be generated automatically over here in the diagram uh, and colored such that they are plotted uniquely uh, and simultaneously on the Piper diagram. And so for this example, I find it easiest to just have the group name and the site name be identical. Uh, and what that really means then in the plot is each one of these colors is a unique sample that's being plot. Okay, so then you need to input the concentrations of calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, bicarbonate, carbonate, chloride, sulfate, and fluoride. 
uh, in this uh, spreadsheet for each of these samples. So you can just copy and paste these directly from the, uh, the ion balance spreadsheet if you're collecting your data there or, or really any of the analysis spreadsheets. These are in units of milligrams per liter. Uh, they, the spreadsheet itself will do a calculation uh, intrinsically for the conversion to milli equivalents per liter. So that's the actual um, charge component being considered in the, in the ion concentration. So uh, if you've already generated or computed milli equivalents per liter, um, make sure you're not inputting that those values here. So these are ppm or milligrams per liter of each of these species. Uh, and if the value is zero, input it as zero, don't leave it blank. So for instance, uh, the carbonate is zero for all these samples and that's simply because the pH of the spring waters were low enough that we didn't really have any, any appreciable carbonate concentration. Everything was in the, the bicarbonate form. So what's really nice about even this interface is uh, you have an automatic calculation for the total dissolved solids in milligrams per liter, so that's the TDS. So you can see that that is a function of all of these inputs here. And then you also have the charge balance. Uh, so this can be computed, I have another video showing you how to do the charge balance in Excel manually um, and using Visual MinTech. This is uh, another way to do that. What's cool about this too is you have this highlight option here and if you click on this you see a drop down option and so what you can do if, if you're especially if you're plotting lots of samples uh, and you're doing this all automatically you can tell Excel to highlight any value based on some threshold uh, because the charge balance is really a proxy for your analytical work right if this is off it should be zero for for all solutions based on the principle of electroneutrality if it's not then that that, that signifies there may be some error, some systematic error in your analysis uh, and to check into that. And so you can see you, could, you have different thresholds. Uh, 10 and 5% are pretty reasonable places uh, for this class if you can get it uh, close enough to, to 10 or even under 10, um, that's pretty good. Okay, so once you have all your data in here, uh, you can go to the Piper tab uh, and I'll show you how this is interpreted. So once you put the data in, uh, this grouping is going to need to be updated based on whatever you change the group names to. So the first thing you want to do is press refresh. So you press refresh, you'll see it sort of populate. It's going to grab a bunch of data from those columns. And in this case, they're all the same because I didn't change them. But uh, that's what's going to happen there. And then that's going to plot everything on this plot. So when you're looking at this plot, remember this triangle is cations, this triangle is anions, and you always have a reminder down here if you want to check it. Uh, and then what's cool is I can go up to this uh, particular dropdown, this gray box says Wheeler Spring, and I get another dropdown. And what that does is it populates the list of all of my samples. And so I can go in and say, I want to see what is the Navajo spring specifically? Where is that point on this plot? Because remember, all of the points in, in that data file are being plotted simultaneously. So if I want to compare Navajo, what you'll see is I have this uh, light gray dashed line that's plotted. And that's telling me here is the cation concentration for Navajo spring. Here is the anion concentration on uh, of course this triangle and then here are the extrapolated lines to the plot uh, or, or the point up here so uh, I can change this to whatever I want and you can see that those lines change depending on uh, those specific values those individual values are also populated here so that you can actually see here's twin spring here are the specific ion concentrations here's my charge balance my total dissolved solid etc so this is really really powerful tool uh, if i want to capture this in another uh, document say for a presentation i can just right click on this and uh, uh, or uh, choose control c uh, or you can take a screenshot of this uh, and then paste it in either way will work Okay, so what's going on over on the right side? So this diagram uh, up here is what's called a stiff diagram, which is uh, sort of like an individual plot of uh, 
of sort of the of the trilinear diagram. So they're they're useful because it's another way, uh, uh, especially geochemically, that data is plotted to really give you a sense for uh, the differences. Um, whatever you have populated here uh, from the dropdown, that's what the stiff diagram is going to uh, compute. Um, so these are individual files. Where this can be really useful is, is simply this visualization. So the shape of this plot gives you a really quick way to uh, compare differences in waters, right? Even just those two, there's a striking difference there that staring at the, uh, the, the actual values of the number may be difficult to see the same uh, striking difference. So um, when you're looking at this plot, uh, there's something really cool about this feature. Since you populated the longitude and latitude values associated with each of these data points, this spreadsheet will also allow you to generate a small icon or picture of this stiff diagram as a function of its GPS location. Uh, you can dump that data as a KMZ file, which uh, can be imported directly into Google Earth. And so when you then look at Google Earth, what you'll see are small icon pictures at each of those individual GPS location sites. So it gives you this really nice, powerful uh, tool to, uh, in real time, visualize the different uh, geochemistries at the different sites that you sampled. So let's do that really quick. So uh, you don't really need to change anything here except for the name of uh, this folder. So that's going to just generate, if you click write KMZ, it's going to generate a, a folder with, uh, with that data, with the KMZ files. And so I can generate, maybe I say this is uh, Manitou Springs. Um, and so now I have a file that's going to be generated as Manitou Springs. You don't need to change any of these. These are parameters for this small icon for this plot. And the y-axis buffer is um, the, the, the actual distance between the, the, the shapes here, the gray, uh, to allow you to still visualize that y-axis. Um, so that doesn't need to be changed either. So what we can do is then click this right KMZ button. And what I would advise if you're going to do this to make it really seamless is to pre-install Google Earth Pro, the actual desktop version, not the browser version, but the desktop version. It's still free. Uh, if you download that version, that will actually allow you to automatically load the KMZ file and visualize. I'll show you what that looks like. It's very, very easy. So if you have this button checked, open KMZ in Google Earth, when we click this button, it's going to write all of these icons uh, to those specific GPS locations in a folder called Manitou Springs, wherever you have this work workbook uh, saved, wherever the directory is. So I just have this on my desktop right now, so it's going to dump this folder on my desktop. And then it's automatically going to import that KMZ into Google Earth. It's going to open Google Earth, and it's going to bring me exactly to the location. So this is pretty cool. So I'll click right KMZ. And it's going to go through and do some stuff. And then you can see it pull up Google Earth automatically. I haven't done anything yet. And it's going to import that KMZ file. It may take a little bit of time. And you can see it's automatically going to draw me to the location of those sites. And now each of these individual icons is the stiff diagram for the spring. So this is Manitou Springs. I can now move around. I can zoom in. I can rotate. But I can very quickly get a pretty quick look at how the uh, chemistries are changing as a function of location, which is uh, especially useful if you're trying to draw conclusions about, say, the mineralogy uh, and the interfacing of the minerals and how they're impacting the different natures or geochemical compositions of the water. And if I click on any one of these values or any one of these icons, it's actually going to populate the, the, the real data. So this is just incredibly powerful. This would take forever to do this uh, manually. Uh, probably too long to make it even worth it or valuable, but um, because this automatically generates, this is an incredibly useful tool.